This is a pretty impressive moment. Ryan Otto, who is a chief warrant officer formerly stationed in Alabama. He's been deployed to Afghanistan since last year, and tonight he returned to surprise his wife Jennifer and their four kids. Moments ago, they had the video board playing a message from him moments ago, and then he ran out of the field and surprised his family. It was an incredibly emotional moment. We see it all the time. There's never a time, I think you and I will both agree, that we don't see that, that the hair on the back of our neck stands up, and it moves us in a very impressive way. And then the crowd started chanting, USA, USA. Incredible moment here in Tallahassee. This hill taking a toll on a couple runners trying to finish those final 20 yards. Wow. Yeah, you can see. What, what a tremendous show of sportsmanship as you've got an athlete who can't quite make it and they've got a team, a, a girl from another team trying to help her to the finish line so she can finish the race. That's what, now that's what the sport is all well. about. Oh my goodness. This is just incredible. The sportsmanship phenomenal as you see those final yards there. As you see Clemson and Louisville helping the Boston College runner. That's Tate and Pease. And the Boston College runner can't even lift her legs right now. She'll try to cross the finish line. What a shot right here. A wake that soccer park and carry. But you sacrifice your own position wow. to help another athlete finish what they started. And that, that's a true sportsmanship. swung on and missed strike three. It was the hardest stuff I've ever gone through in my life. I mean, from not wanting to, like, not having the energy to get out of bed, being sick all the time. Here goes Connor on his way, James Connor. He goes the distance for the Panthers touchdown. This is his PET scan. All that brightness is activity of the cancer of the lymphoma. I heard I got cancer, you know, I was, I was a little scared. You know, but fear is a choice. I choked out the fear of cancer. We're going to fight it and we're going to beat this thing. I found out James was diagnosed in December and uh, I immediately contacted him through Twitter and uh, tried to get a hold of him. Kind of just, hey man, I'm here for you. I just literally finished treatment. Uh, I know all the ups and downs of what's going to go on. We've been talking through phone and FaceTime for over a year now and it's, uh, it was finally cool to be able to uh, get to meet him and just uh, give him a hug and say congratulations. Brother! How you doing, brother? Oh, good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, boy. Wow. How you been, brother? I'm good. It's like we've been through such a hardship and been able to come out of the other side and, and even in our respective sports, I mean, just trying to be an example for other people behind us and, and in the cancer world, it's, I mean, it's something I can't describe. <laughs> Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Very excited, bro. Here, we've got a special presentation coming up. Holiday greeting all the way from Afghanistan from Bo Farrell, the older brother of point guard Matt Farrell. From 4th Squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment here at Obi Fenty in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. This is First Lieutenant Bo Farrell, wishing Notre Dame a very Merry Christmas. Congrats on the win and go Irish. Mom and Dad, I love you and I miss you very much. Maddie, I've been watching you tonight from here and I can hear Jack Nolan call your name. And just remember when we used to play around when we were kids, everybody called you Squirrel. You've always followed your hopes and always followed your dreams. And I just want you to know how proud I am of you. I love you and I miss you very much. 
For us, home is wherever we're together. And I look forward to being home with you soon. Really, really soon. What a special moment in South Bend. Now, Matt Farrell certainly did not know his brother, Bo, would be here. Thought he was still in Afghanistan. Thought he would be there until February. Matt and Bo, their parents didn't know either. It was their grandmother who came up with this idea and reached out to Notre Dame. And what a special scene this is inside Purcell Pavilion. It's the Facebook photo that'll get you choked up. Florida State's Travis Rudolph having lunch with Bo, a boy with autism. He was sitting by himself, I had got some pizza, and I asked him, can I sit down with him? He said, sure, why not? And we had, went from there, started a great conversation. Bo's mom, Leah, shared the photo and a story explaining what middle school is like for Bo and that he often eats lunch alone. Leah had no idea who Travis Rudolph was before yesterday. She had no idea he played college football, no idea every Saturday in the fall, 80,000 people cheer and yell for him. Leah cheers on her son every day. She wrote, she had tears streaming down her face when her friend sent her this picture. Travis says he appreciates the opportunity to connect with the community. Those kids, they really do look up to us. And I remember being in that position just not too long ago. And I feel like one, one person can make a difference. And maybe I'm that difference. Bo's mom ended her Facebook message with this. Travis Rudolph, thank you so much. You made this mama exceedingly happy and have made us fans for life. What's up, dude? <laughs> dude, I'm so glad to be here right now. I finally get to see you play, dude. <laughs> How you doing, dude? <laughs> Hey, you good, Bill? Shit. <laughs> you good, dude? Yeah. <laughs> dude, you're going to hair and s***. <laughs> so good to be here, dude. I will try to get this shit done. <laughs> you good, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we take this time to honor former Boston College outfielder and current director of baseball operations, Pete Frades. Pete's impact off the field has been an inspiration for millions of people, exemplifying the BC ideal of men and women for others. Pete was diagnosed with ALS back in March of 2012, just at the age of 27. Since his diagnosis, Pete, along with his family and friends, have worked tirelessly to raise awareness and funds to find a cure for the disease. In the summer of 2014, he and the family championed the Ice Bucket Challenge through the use of social media, helping raise over $200 million to help find a cure. our privilege today to officially retire number three where your legacy will forever live at Boston College. When I first got here, uh, I thought I was going to play behind Kendall Marshall. 
five or six minutes a game, uh, spot minutes, and kind of develop and become, you know, a better player over over the four years. But um, he left, and uh, you kind of handed me the keys uh, to the program and to the team. And you know, you probably had more confidence in me than I did at that time. And um, a lot of people were down on me as a freshman, but. The one thing you did is you always believed in me. You know, you always told me, I believe in you, son. You're going to make shots. You're going to do fine. You're going to be a great player. And that you just believed in me. And I can't thank you enough for that because that allowed me to be a confident person myself and help me grow as a person. And I know the most important thing um, I know my mom's going to appreciate this. Is uh, I've started taking note of the thought of the day every day in practice um, because, you know, it's a lot of words of wisdom. And I know one day I'm not going to be able to walk through this tunnel and, and uh, meet with you at the beginning of practice every day. And I've tried to be every, every bit the player you wanted me to be, but you've made me a better man. And that's the most important thing. I'm ten times a better man than when I was I got here. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, I like it. Well, what do you like? 